are trapped in the dark cellar of your home. Beside you is the murdered body of your wife. And above at the front door are your friends looking for you, tracking you down, cutting off your escape. Escape, produced and directed by William N. Robeson, and carefully contrived to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight we escape to a university town in England and a household where hate holds sway as we listen to John Collier's famous story, Back for Christmas. Yes, my dear. What on earth are you doing down here in the cellar? Why, just a little digging. And why, may I ask, have you chosen this day of all days to dig up the cellar floor? Why, I thought as the weather has been so damp, this would be an excellent time to plant my devil's garden. Devil's garden? Whatever nonsense is that? Oh, that's my little joke about it. You see, I've managed to secure some of the spores of several unclassified wild orchids. In their natural state, they bloom under damp masses of leaf mold. The Orocanian Indians call them devil flowers because they appear to bloom under the ground. Well, I'm sure the Orocanian Indians will be very interested if you succeed in growing these ridiculous flowers under the cellar floor. Whom else it'll interest, I can't imagine. What's that terrible smell? Why, that's the leaf mold, my dear. Chemically identical with the earth blanket they grow under in the wild state. I really should line the pit with concrete so as to prevent seepage from this foreign soil. But I don't suppose there'll be time for it now. There certainly will not be time for it. Do you realize that we're sailing for America a week from today and you've made no arrangements whatever? Unless you call digging a hole in the cellar making arrangements. I certainly don't. Devil's garden indeed. Sometimes I think you're going soft in the head, Herbert. Well, I suppose it's inconsiderate of me. But you see, I've been wanting to try this experiment for a long time. But what with my lectures and seminars at the university, there never seemed to be time. Well, there certainly isn't any time for it now. I suppose you've forgotten I made an appointment for you at the barber's this afternoon. Oh, must I shave off my beard, Hermione? Now, we've been all through that. Of course you must. They don't wear beards in America. Go and get your jacket on and do as I tell you. Yes, Hermione. And don't forget to take your umbrella. It looks like rain. Yes, Hermione. Oh, don't look so put upon, Herbert. Someone has to plan things in this house, or you'd never even get to the university in time for your lectures, much less make arrangements for a trip to America. I know, but what of my specimens? There'll be plenty of time to plant your precious devil's garden when you get home from America. We're not going to be gone forever, you know. We'll be back here for Christmas. Yes, of course. Back for Christmas. I'd forgotten. Well, try to remember it. And if you can't do that, just do as I tell you. I've been making the plans in this house for 20 years. And if there's any digging to be done, I'll manage that as well. You understand, Herbert? Yes, Hermione. Good. You have just 20 minutes to clean this mess up down here and keep your appointment at the barber's. And when you finish there, I want you to come straight home. Why, well, I, I wanted to stop at Miss Markham's and pick up some books I ordered. Well... All right. But don't loiter there the whole afternoon, browsing over those old books the way you usually do. Now hurry and clear up this rubbish. Get rid of that smelly stuff. And no more digging, mind you. Yes, Hermione. <laughs> yes, Hermione. How many years have I been saying that? Ten years? Fifteen? Twenty? Clear up the rubbish. Yes, Hermione. Don't forget your umbrella. Yes, Hermione. Do this, do that. Yes, Hermione. Yes, yes, yes. How much longer can I stand this? Good evening, sir. Good evening, Miss Markham. Why, it's Professor Carpenter, isn't it? You didn't recognize me. Oh, you look ever so much younger without the beard. 
20 years at least. 20 years? Oh, you'll be glad to know those books you ordered have finally arrived. Hmm? Books? Phytotomy of phalloid gametophytes and coniferous shrubs of North America. Those are the ones you ordered, aren't they? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. You're very kind, Miss Markham. Why kind, Professor Carpenter? Well, not many young ladies in bookshops would go out of their way to look up rare books for an old professor of botany. Oh, why, you're not old, Professor Carpenter. Really, you look... Oh, and besides, I adore botany. It's my particular hobby. Oh, really? Well, you never told me that before, Miss Markham. Oh, I was afraid to. You were so... Oh, so imposing with a beard and all. Well, I... You might be interested in some specimens of alpine polyanthes that were sent to me by a friend in Switzerland. Switzerland? I used to go there for my holidays before the war. You like Switzerland? Oh, I love every part of it. The lakes, the mountains, the beautiful spring flowers. Oh, especially the flowers. Oh, yes. It seems we have quite a lot in common, Miss Markham. I'm, I'm sorry we haven't talked before. Oh, I am too. <laughs> it is all the fault of the beard, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Markham, forgive me if this sounds foolish, but I feel that shaving off my beard is the most important thing I've done for 20 years. Oh, it is. I'm sure it is. I'm ashamed that I've been so distant with you all the time. Oh, there were times when I almost spoke up. Times when you came in here, tired after day with your students at the university. Oh, you seem so alone. The way I'm alone in the world. I'd like to have asked you to stay a while and talk with me. But some way or other, I, I wound up giving you your change and letting you go on your way. You, you say you're all alone in the world? Since my father died. Well, did you never think of marrying? My father was a very remarkable man. I never found anyone who, who seemed to measure up to what he led me to expect of men. And then the war came Miss Markham, oh, I... It, it's been so long since anyone called me by my first name. I'd like you to, if you don't mind. It's Marion. Marion. And yours? Uh, Herbert. <laughs> How long have you been alone, Herbert? Uh, alone? Oh, I knew you were a widower, of course, the first time I saw you. A widower? Oh, I can always tell. There's a certain sadness in a man's eyes. A sweet sadness, I think, when he's been married and then... A widower? I never thought of it in quite that way. Oh, perhaps I shouldn't be talking like this. But I've often wondered what she must have been like. Your wife, I mean. Hermione? Hmm. Not an easy woman to forget. Very strong. Always managing things. The house, my wardrobe, my friends. When we dined at a restaurant, she even ordered my food. She was always managing things. You might say she managed herself to death. Oh, poor woman. She must have loved you very much. But she needn't have put herself out so. It's plain to see you don't need things managed for you. You need companionship, I think. Someone sympathetic with your work. <sighs> but the last thing on earth you need is a manager. How well you put it. The last thing on earth. <laughs> That's the first time I thought of it, of course. But suddenly a whole new world opened up before my eyes. Marion and America and no more of Hermione's planning my life for me. By the time I got home, my mind was working overtime. Well, at last. You certainly took long enough about it. What are you looking so pleased about? I don't really know. Getting rid of the beard, perhaps. I feel 20 years younger. You look even smaller. Your face looks triangular or something. I'd forgotten your chin was so weak. Oh, but never mind that. You can grow it back soon enough, after Christmas. Where are you going? Down to the cellar. I just bought this electric lantern and I thought I'd put it away down there. Now, whatever possessed you to buy a thing like that? I don't know. I'd rather like this lantern. Might come in handy. 
Who knows? Now, Herbert, don't start digging down there again. I have a hundred things yes. to do putting the house in order before we leave. I want you to carry these boxes upstairs for me. Yes, Hermione. And if you're going down to the cellar, take this along and stuff it into the furnace. But this is my old bathrobe. I may need it. Oh, nonsense. I've bought you a new one. Get rid of it. And don't start puttering down there with that devil's garden or whatever you call it. I'm through digging, my dear. I think the pit is quite deep enough now for my devil's garden. It would all have to be carefully planned, of course. Just as carefully planned as Hermione was planning the trip to America. We both went about our respective engagements as the days passed. I spent all the time I could with Marion and finally she consented. And then it was the last day, the big day, the day we were to sail for America. Operator, operator, are you there? I'm still waiting on that call to Salisbury. Oh, well, put them on quickly. Hello, is this Paul Holt and Sons? Mrs. Herbert Carpenter here. Did you receive my letter? Oh, good. Now, remember, we'll be back for Christmas, and I want the job done without fail. What's that? Oh, no, I'm sure he doesn't suspect anything. Send the bill to me in New York as I instructed you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, there you are, Herbert. Where have you been? Back stairs. I dismissed the servants. Dismissed the servants? But I've asked some friends in to a farewell tea. Go and tell them it's a mistake. I'm afraid it's too late now. They've packed and gone. Oh, you have messed up things properly. How many times have I told you to leave things to me? I make the plans around here. Yes, Hermione. You'll have to do better than this when I plan the trip home, or we'll never in the world be back for Christmas. Back for Christmas, back for Christmas. Must you keep saying that? Well, why not? We are coming back for Christmas, aren't we? Supposing I were offered a professorship in one of those wealthy American universities. <laughs> Nonsense. Americans care nothing for botany. Luther Burbank was an American. Well, that's different. What have you ever done except muck around in the dirt with a lot of roots and tubers? They've asked me to lecture. That means something. Of course they asked you to lecture. Americans are paid to hear any foreigner deliver a lecture once. Now, there's no use getting yourself in a state about this, Herbert. No doubt this extra money will come in very handy when we arrive back, back for, for Christmas. Christmas. Precisely. And it's no good you're making a joke of it. Heaven knows where you'd be today if I hadn't got a sense of time. Yes, my dear Hermione. And since you've been so foolish as to dismiss the servants, you may empty the ashtrays and straighten up this room while we're waiting for the guests to arrive. I'm going upstairs to change. Call me when they get here. Yes, Hermione. Yes, Hermione, yes, Hermione. For 20 years, Hermione, always so right, thought of everything. Well, not quite everything. She's dressing now. Safe to call Marion. Oh, if Marion were to change her mind now, if she had any idea I was not a widower. Hello. Hello, Marion. Herbert. No. No, my darling. Nothing's wrong. My plans are the same. Unless you've changed. Good. We'll meet in New York as we planned. Yes, yes, I do love you, my darling. Herbert! I'm sorry, I can't talk any longer. Yes, I, I'll meet you in New York a week from tomorrow without fail. It, goodbye till then. Herbert, were you talking on the phone just now? Yes, Hermione. Whoever was it? Well, Freddy. Freddy Sinclair, of course. Oh. Didn't I hear you say something about meeting somebody in New York? Why, yes. Old Freddy said he might possibly get out to America before we leave, and I said, of course, we'd meet him there if he decides to go. That seems very peculiar. But then all of your friends are peculiar. Yes, Hermione. And just look at your jacket. Have you been digging in that cellar again? Yes, Hermione. Well, there's no need for it. You can't possibly get that devil's garden thing finished. Go and change your clothes before the guests arrive. Yes, Hermione. Oh, never mind. I see somebody coming up the walk now. Go and let them in. Yes, Hermione. Herbert. Hmm? Yes, my dear. Look out the window. There's Professor and Mrs. Hewitt. But who's that with them? Why, I... I... Precisely. Freddy Sinclair. Peculiar. You should have been talking to him on the phone not three minutes ago. And now here he is. Yes. Yes, isn't it? Uh, 
But then, as you say, Hermione, all of my friends are peculiar. Not half so peculiar as you. Digging in the cellar an hour before we leave for America. Just look at yourself. And now that I think of it... Yes, Hermione? Oh, never mind. Go and let them in. You were going to ask me something, Hermione. But the hole I'm digging in the cellar. Oh, good heavens. Stop rolling your eyes about that way. One would think you were digging a grave down there instead of a storage bin. Yes, Hermione. What's that? I said yes, Hermione. Oh, bother. Open the door and stop saying yes, Hermione. I think, my dear, I've said it for the last time. <laughs> Back for Christmas. Hermione was so positive we would be back for Christmas. That last afternoon, pouring tea for a few friends who had come in to say last-minute farewells, she kept reiterating... Oh, I promise you, Mrs. Hewitt. Remember, we absolutely must have you with us for Christmas. Oh, we'll be back. It's not absolutely certain, of course. Herbert, what do you mean, it's not certain? Of course it's certain. <laughs> After all, Herbert, old boy, you've contracted to lecture for only three months. Quite right, but then, of course... Anything may happen. Oh, Herbert adores being unpredictable. Now, what other man would dig a great hole in the cellar on the very day he was leaving for America? A hole in the cellar? <laughs> yes. He's going to put some unclassified wild orchids down there. A devil's garden, if you please. <laughs> Sounds mysterious. That's Herbert. Though he's really quite simple once you find out what he's up to. Now, take that telephone call he put through to you a few moments before you arrived, Freddy. Uh, to, to me? Yes. Herbert wanted to surprise me about your plan to meet us in New York next month. <laughs> That's why he called, of course, to ask you not to mention it. But, my dear Hermione, Herbert couldn't possibly have telephoned me within the past hour. I've been walking in the park since three. He didn't telephone you? Well, how could he? And as for my going to America... Oh, no, that... Come, come, Freddy. <laughs> You may as well own up. Hermione has found me out again. But Herbert, old chap, I, I really don't there. understand. There. You see what a poor liar Herbert makes. He's red as a beetroot. <laughs> Aren't you ashamed of yourself, Professor? Stringing poor Hermione along like that. And as for you, Freddy, I'm furious you said nothing to us about going to America. But look here, old girl. I've been trying to tell everyone that I have oh, no... Oh, stuff and nonsense. The game's gone on long enough. Perhaps Herbert's merely planning a surprise for me. Yes, let's leave it at that, my dear. Well, we must start getting ready. It was marvellous of you to come in to say goodbye. And don't worry about Herbert's little jokes. <laughs> I will bring him back for Christmas. You may rely on it. They all believed her. For years, she'd been promising me for dinner parties, garden parties, committees. And the promises had always been kept. This time, they wouldn't be. I'd seen to that. The servants were gone for good, the farewells all said. I had timed to the minute how long it would take to fill in the hole in the cellar, in my devil's garden. Upstairs in the bedroom I undressed, folded my clothes over a chair and put on my old bathrobe. Then I opened the door into Hermione's room. Are you ready, Herbert? Hmm. Hermione, have you a moment to spare? Of course, my dear, I've just finished. Then do come in here for a moment. Uh, there's something rather extraordinary here. Good heavens, Herbert, what are you lounging about in that filthy old bathrobe for? I told you to put it into the furnace. I shall do it today, yes. I really will, I, I promise. Well, high time. Now, what is it you want to show me? In the bathroom here. Just look. Who in the world do you suppose dropped a gold chain down the bathtub drain? Nobody has, of course. Nobody wears such a thing in this house. Then what's it doing there? I don't see anything. Well, here. I'll hold this flashlight for you. If you lean right over, you can see it shining deep down. Oh, such a lot of nonsense. Just with a... I don't see it, Herbert. Go on looking, Hermione. In just a moment... Herbert, I absolutely refuse <coughs> to wait. Herbert, what are you doing? Take your hands off my neck. I will, Hermione, just as soon as I've finished the arrangements for my trip to America. What are you talking about? You thought you were the only one who could plan things, didn't you, Hermione? Well, I've been making some plans of my own this past week... In exactly two minutes, you'll be dead, Hermione. Oh. You see, two minutes. I've planned it very accurately. Oh, you'll never get away with it. Let me go. I thought you'd say that, but I will get away with it. You won't mind the smell of the leaf mold down in the cellar when I take you there today. Yes. That's where you're going, Hermione. Into my devil's garden that annoyed you so much. Oh. The soil is full of clay. It won't settle too much. In a month or so, it won't even look as if it had been dug up. <laughs> My friends, 
They all expect me back for Christmas. Hmm. If they don't hear from me, they'll wonder. And if I don't come back, they'll start asking questions. Oh, no, they won't. Because you'll write them letters, Hermione. On the typewriter, as you always do. They'll be signed H in that neat cryptic way you always sign your notes to your friends. Let me up. No. It won't work, Herbert. You never were any good at planning things. Oh, but I've changed, my dear. I've learned from watching you all these years. The lecture people in America, they'll expect you to be traveling with your wife. I will be traveling with my wife. But her name will not be Hermione. Rose. Fortunately, they'd never met you. I'll write a few letters home for you. Then fewer and fewer. Write letters signed with my own name. Always expecting to get back, but never quite able to. I'll keep the house one year and then another and another. They'll get used to it. I might even come back alone in a year or two and clear it up properly. Say you died in America. <laughs> Nobody will ever suspect you're lying under the floor of the cellar in this very house. Oh, but it won't work, I tell you. That pit you dug in the cellar, I'm... I can assure you, my dear Hermione, it will serve its purpose well. <laughs> Sorry, my dear. I've got to get this done on schedule. You have just five seconds to say your prayers. Herbert, you must listen. The cellar. <laughs> Don't do it, Herbert. 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 <laughs> <laughs> water cut off at the main as I knew she would order it. She was so thorough, but so was I. Strangulation. Nothing to wash up. The electric current shut off exactly at one o'clock, just as she ordered it. She thought of everything. So did I. My nice new electric lantern. Plenty of light to work by in the cellar. The old bathrobe she wanted me to throw away came in handy now if there should be any chance blood stain. Then into the fire with it afterwards, the last evidence of my devil's garden was going well. Still an hour till I had to leave for the boat. The hold was almost filled. No. Oh, no, not now. Go away, please, whoever you are, go away. Did I lock the front door? If it's the Wallingfords... Oh, no, no. Go away. Go away. I say, Herbert, old thing. Just keep calm, quiet. They won't look down in the cellar. Keep calm. They'll go away. Where the dickens can they be? Of course they are. Maybe they popped round to Liddell. Oh, we must see them. Or to the shops, maybe. Something at the last minute. Oh, not her body. Uh, shall I shout? Oh, don't. Might not be tasteful. No harm in a shout, my love. No, let's come in our way back. Hermione said they wouldn't leave till seven. Oh, all right. Only I want a last drink with old Herbert. He'd be hurt, you know. All right, let's hurry. We can be back by half past six. Half past six. Oh, there's still time. After that, it was easy. Put the finishing touches on the devil's garden, dress fast, get out of the house before 6.30, take the boat train to Southampton and board the ship for America. All according to plan. Hermione's plan. I say, Stuart. Uh, right, sir. Uh, my wife is indisposed. She'll be taking her meals in our stateroom. Oh, for, for, for the old voyage? Yes, for the whole voyage. Well, I trust your wife is feeling better this morning, Professor Carpenter. Uh, yes, a little. Not yet well enough to leave her cabin. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, by the way, uh, here's a copy of the radiogram you sent for your wife last evening. Oh? Oh, thank you. I'll just check it over. Hmm. I say, look here. What is it? Did the typist make a mistake? Uh, no. No, nothing important. She can correct it later. For a moment, I had the feeling that Hermione had been leaning over my shoulder again, correcting what I'd written, as she always did. I had written a radiogram to Professor Hewitt and his wife. Haven't been out of my cabin the whole beastly trip. Herbert, well, we now doubt we will be back for Christmas. The copy read, we no doubt will be back for Christmas. Exactly what Hermione would have written. The rest of the voyage was uneventful, and Marion and I met in New York and were married just as we'd planned. Just as we'd planned.
Professor and Mrs. Carpenter, we, we have reservations, I believe. Oh, yes, we've been expecting you, sir. Boy, take Professor and Mrs. Carpenter's luggage up to their suite. You know, Mrs. Carpenter, you're quite a surprise. Your letter reserving the rooms was so uh, thorough. I was expecting an older, more forbidding sort of person, frankly, ma'am. Oh, no. As a matter of fact, we're just married. But my letter reserving the rooms... Uh, it's, I wrote the letter, my dear, and signed it Mrs. Herbert Carpenter. Purely a joke. Oh, what a cunning old fox you are, Herbert. Now that I think of it, I am, rather. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, there's a letter for you, Mrs. Carpenter. A letter for me? I wonder who knows... Well, we shall find out in good time. Come along, my dear. We're keeping the boy waiting. Dum, 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 pum, 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 <sighs> Nothing like a cold, brisk shower to put a man to rights. Herbert, this letter... Uh, oh, yes, the letter. Uh, dry my hair, will you, dear? It seems to be a bill of some sort. From a building contract in Salisbury. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bother. Dry your own hair. Oh, thank you, my sweet. Uh, let's see this bill, or whatever it is. It's very puzzling. Herbert. Hmm? You were a widower, weren't you? I mean, Hermione isn't still alive. I can assure you she is not. Uh, let's have that letter. Hmm. Dear madam, this is to acknowledge your order together with the key... Together with the keys to your house in Launston Place. Our men had no difficulty in finding the place where your husband had begun the excavation in the cellar, but apparently changed his mind at the last moment and filled it in again. Oh, no. What is it, Herbert? Our men will begin digging tomorrow, and you may rest assured that it will be a professional job and will be completed in ample time for your surprise Christmas present to your husband... We are happy to be conspirators with you in this thoughtful gesture and hope that Professor Carpenter will be pleased at the results of our work on what he so quaintly calls his devil's garden. Very truly yours, Paul Holton, son's contractors. What does it mean, Herbert? It means that Hermione was right. I will be back for Christmas. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson and tonight brought you Back for Christmas by John Collier. Adapted for radio by Robert Tallman with Paul Fries as Herbert, Eleanor Audley as Hermione, and Marta Mitrovich as Marion. Music is conceived and conducted by Cy Fuhrer. Next week... You are lost in a London fog, exhausted and frantic, unsure if the figures looming around you are real or creatures of your fear, and behind you, pursuing you, intent on killing you, lurks a murderer from whom you must escape. Next week, we escape with Elgin and Blackwood's ghostly story, Confession. Good night, then, until this same time next week, when again we offer you Escape. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.